Did I do it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you did it. You're great. How are you? Uh, earning my millennial card, I guess, doing this. <laughs> okay, so let me let me take care of like the business, and then we'll get down to chat. Awesome. So, hi everybody, welcome. My name is Ben Wolf. I'm the creator of the Beanie Sleeper, the head wrap with a built-in sleep mask. And uh, this is Sleeping with Ben. And in bed today with me is Beth Slazak. Did I say your last name right? You did. Well done. Nailing the yeah. last name. So I, I'm going to get, I want to start with, um, thank, first of all, thank you for being in bed. That's awesome. Um, I want to get into your intro, but I want to have a, I'm going to have a question. And then I want you to talk about yourself. Okay. But what is a certified humor professional? That is the best title I think I've ever heard in my life. Uh, so I'm a member of the Association for Applied and Therapeutic Humor. Uh, I'm one of their okay. past presidents, yeah. Um, and they run a humor academy. And to, to get your chip, your, your certified humor professional, it's a three-year program. Uh, mm -hmm. At the conference, you come before the conference and you stay after the conference. And uh, during the conference, you do sessions. And then uh, throughout the year, you, for you form a cohort. And um, you meet regularly uh, working but, on projects, doing it? readings, discussions, and things like that. So it's, yeah, it's all around it? therapeutic and positive humor. OK, so it's therapy through humor. Well. It's not necessarily therapy. There's a lot of therapists uh, involved, but it's it's using positive humor. So um, uh, the audience includes uh, Drew Tarvin uh, is is one of those people. He does uh, humor in the workplace, and the fun department usually has people there. Okay. I'm thinking of. Um, uh, Oh my gosh, I lost her name. And I follow her. <laughs> I follow how her on social media. She's been Regiri, I think. Is how, did you, how did you come to this? Uh, <laughs> so I came to this through my deliberate creativity study. Uh, oh, and I have to say, by the way, uh, you made a very common mistake. Um, and I just noticed it a little while ago. Uh, on the thing, I'm not the executive director of the. Creative oh no, Education. I changed it. Oh good, oh good. <laughs> I even emailed you because I caught it and I changed it. Uh, the executive director is Beth Miller, and so yeah. we have a whole bit about not that Beth, other Beth, also Beth. <laughs> um, I get it. So I, uh, I, short story long, went okay. back to school to become a. Uh, social studies teacher. New York State requires a master's degree. So I was looking at what master's degree I wanted to take. And I was a non-traditional student when I went back for my teacher certification, which means by non-traditional, I mean, I had to take, I had a degree in history and dance, which <laughs> they're just beating down the door for jobs for that. Uh, so I sure. went back with a degree in history. It took me two years to get my teacher's certification. And I had to take some things that uh, history majors don't normally take, but social studies do take, like Economics 101. And non-traditional student meant that I attended every class sober. And I wrote down the things the teacher said which stymied this one guy who sat next to me. He was like, how did you do so well? And I'm like, these, these are secrets to life. Um, sobriety in class is helpful. Uh, mm -hmm. So when I, when I went to get my master's, I was, I was tired of dealing with that kind of person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I found a list of degrees that counted for your New York State teachers. And one of them was creative studies. So I, I got the master's in uh, creativity and change leadership from Buff State. And that led me to improv, which led me to uh, different humor 
uh, organizations. And uh, Jane Fisher, I think, was the one who was like, let's go to AATH, the Association for Applied and Therapeutic Humor Conference. And, and it just kind of, you know, you find your people. <laughs> and since they're my people. Um, so let that me ask you this. Um, let me ask you. Um, so you're with the Creative Education Foundation and you're like their humor goddess, <laughs> I'm imagining. And <laughs> how, when you, I mean, is that a position they were seeking? We need some fun, we need some funny? Or did you come in and go, oh, I'm gonna make this a blast and everybody's gonna love this <laughs> program because I'm super funny and I can help you? Um, I'm gonna say yes. <laughs> it was all those things. Uh, humor is, is very uh, popular in the creativity world because a lot of like innovation and things like this it is uh I'm, i think i'm losing your signal you're going in and out oh no 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 there you are yeah okay. i i'm i might have to leave my bedroom i'm too far from my wife no no go where you need to go <laughs> go where you need to go we get we get the bedroom thing. go Just where you need to go we're going a little i don't mind. let me know if it's i've had me. lots of people leave my bedroom before yeah. it's no big deal. <laughs> does the hallway work Yes, that's great. Uh, so uh, when when you're in in the area of creativity and innovation, it requires playing around with ideas and playing around with thoughts. And so there's there's a natural partnership. And mm -hmm. uh, you see a lot of improv and we'll do a lot of uh, applied improv sessions with people because Thinking the way you do in improv helps uh, break down barriers and model good behaviors for when the risks are a little higher. Um, uh, I I love improv. I've studied improv, and yes. what I love about improv it's the yes and because I think if more people did a yes and, we could really further conversation and then change. Yeah. So I'm a big believer in that. And I find that as an entrepreneur, um, yes and has served me much more than no. Yeah. So I can only imagine in school, in the education, yes and builds. It's, it's, so, it's so true, we'll do, it just happens that w CEF is a, is a small organization and so Almost all of the programming is done by uh, my colleague, Missy Carvin and I, and mm -hmm. uh, not part of the job description, but since, you know, you got it, our boss uses it, we're both improvisers. And so um, we do a lot of applied improv sessions with organizations for teamwork, for communication, and that I'm whole yes happy. and yeah is kind of one of the pillars of creativity because if you look at using praise first and what do you like about that idea, that helps you latch on to what you, you need in your criteria, you need in your change, and what you don't like. Generally speaking, you don't need to point that out. You just leave it behind. Like if you're if if it's like an R and D situation where you're you're um, creating a new product, you're like, oh, I really like this. You don't need to point out the ten things that you don't like because you start focusing on the things that you do like or the things that you you also want it to have. Yeah, that's a really great point. <clears throat> I think it's so important to understand that you cannot like something. That's okay. But what's your answer or your alternative or how do you want to make it better? But I, I, I just love that. And that's part of the yes and thing because, okay, that's not working, but we can do this and make it better and, yeah. and move forward. I love that. And I think, you know, I have a really dear friend. She's a teacher in, uh, um, she teaches grade school in the LA Unified. And if I don't think if she had a sense of humor, she would be able to do it. Yeah. It's, 
It's <laughs> yeah. really because you have to be creative. You have to think way outside the box. And that's what I love about what you do. I've got to ask, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to change it a little bit, make it a little bit more personal about you. Humor is such an interesting thing because I, I was kind of a funny kid. I would do anything to make people laugh, to crack a joke, because it got me attention and I liked it. Yeah. And I'm funny. I'm kind of funny. So I'm wondering, when did you recognize this in yourself um, as a child that you were funny or you did funny things? If not, when did it happen? Because you must have had a light bulb moment. So I, <laughs> my mom put me in dancing school when I was little. And uh, the story goes, I don't remember this, but this is, you know, the, the, uh, liturgy I was brought up with is I was five and after a while I wanted to quit which I get because like it's Saturday mornings and um, yeah. I can see me being a little bored with it I I lean towards the squirrel side of the whatever the divide is and she's like okay and you started this so you need to finish it and then you don't have to do it again uh, mm -hmm. so June came around and it was dance recital time. And this was mom, sister school of dance. Shout out to them. I know they're still around. Uh, and, uh, so much of my childhood is tied in with that place. Uh, they held their dance recitals at Klein hands music hall in Buffalo, which is like a legit, it, it's the home of the Buffalo Philharmonic. And so I was like this scrawny little five-year-old who was on a real big stage in front of a real big audience with we had we had an orchestra and spotlights and I was like <gasps> this is a thing that speaks to my deep soul and so from that point on I I've always been kind of performance led like um also, you can tell I'm deeply shy and quiet. So it was, I don't think I thought of myself as funny, funny, the way that other people have spoken to me about that since then. Un, really until grad school, when, when I was getting, getting the, the creativity masters, uh, it, came up in a practice facilitation in class and I at the time I live out in the middle of nowhere I live halfway between Buffalo and Rochester in the middle of nowhere and I was teaching in the city of Buffalo so I had pretty much an hour commute every morning and uh, I was an early adapter of like hands-free uh, phone communication and nobody else was doing it so i would call into the radio shows in the morning all the time and mm -hmm. every, every once in a while i'd be like when i was oh it was when i was student <laughs> teaching i um for, for the local buffalo people i had to take the skyway over because i was student teaching in lackawanna and so i called into 1025 with um rob I swear I do have a mind. I just, uh, uh, names just like are disappearing out of Rob, 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 Rob something or other. And I'm like, you have so much power because you have the morning radio show. There are no, like half the lights were off on the Skyway. And the Skyway is scary. If you are not from Buffalo, they call it the Skyway because it's like up in the sky. You go up forever <laughs> and you are like over Lake Erie and <laughs> it's two lanes and there's all kinds of urban myths about like people stopping and like blowing off into the lake and dying and things. it's it's kind of an intimidating situation oh, and I'm like Rob you have <sighs> to fix you am I losing you again I, I missed, I pretty much missed that because your signal kind of, is there another place you can move to really quick? <laughs> Moving now, oh, it's a grand tour of my house. Um, 
<laughs> see if my office is better. Is okay, better? We'll, we'll try that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, cool. Then I can set you up to be hands free. Uh, I so I called into the to the radio to to one hundred two five, and I'm like, Rod, you've got all of the power in the world because you were on the morning radio show. You need to fix this. And he was like, Yes, I do have all the power. And so he had like this bum bum bum. Um, so I call into radio shows all of the time in the morning, and I ended up calling into 98.5 was doing a Buffalo stand-up thing, and I made it to mm. their finals list. I was one of the top three. Nice. And um I uh I was talking about it in class and this one woman, Anne Dunbar, she is a wonderful, wonderful woman. She was, we were talking about my challenge and it was around um, a work thing. And she's like, why are you doing that? You're funny. Like you're funny, funny. And I, I think that was the first time somebody besides like my mom said I was funny, funny. And so I just kind of got into that concentrating being more thinking about humor more on purpose well i mean it looks like you really found your calling um <laughs> which is so cool everybody i mean we're all searching for things that make us happy and jobs we like and it looks like you found yours which i think is beautiful i have one final question that i really want to know uh this is sleeping with ben so we do talk about sleep so i want to know what sleep rituals do you have that help you fall asleep that you can share? Yeah. Um, so one, uh, I used to be a night owl, but my kids fixed that uh, because they were all <laughs> morning people. And as I have um, gotten closer to my expiration date, I've changed like what late means. And 9 30 p.m is the middle of the night like 10 o'clock is is midnight in my mind so go <laughs> up kind I'm of with you and um we always have nighttime candy <laughs> so gummy melatonins <laughs> nighttime, nighttime what i missed that nighttime what what was that i couldn't hear that your video nighttime what nighttime candy Nighttime candy, really? Gummy okay. melatonin. <laughs> oh, melatonin gummy. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> um, and um, my husband. I so I'm remarried. This is a second marriage. Um, and oh. when I married Steve, he was a watching TV in bed person, and um. Since he was so awesome, that was different for me, but I was willing to to roll with that. So he'll watch uh, something, and then <laughs> then I make him turn it over to uh, Midsummer Murders, and that's what I listen to to fall asleep. <laughs> it's it's theme song. I think we could is a little ghost. I think we have sandy. a show on that. <laughs> <laughs> I would for a long time I was listening to Science Friday. Um, uh -huh. and that was that was great. And then but and and I'll rotate, like sometimes I'll listen to different podcasts, but I like falling asleep to talking. And because we talked about doing this, I was thinking about like the why of that. And uh, when we first moved to Buffalo, we lived with my grandparents. My sister and I shared a room on the second floor that was over the living room. So we would hear like the grown-ups talking and watching TV. So like that type background noise, I think hey, is Beth. just super comforting. I think we're going to, I'm really having trouble with your connection. We're going to, I want to do this again sometime because I think I miss like a lot of stuff other than that you uh you found out you were funny later <laughs> you have a great job that you love you have 
a really bizarre sleeping ritual of melatonin gummies and murder shows. That's nuts, but it works for you. <laughs> Did I, I kind of nailed it there, right? Gummy bears, murder. Gummy bears, perfect, murder. perfect. Yeah, Stop yeah, it. that's exactly so, me in a nutshell. <laughs> so let me just say thank you so much for being on me. I'm so sorry about the connection. I'm going to have you back on because I want to discuss further about like improv and the classroom and what you and how that works. Because um, I think it's really a great subject. And how do you, I'd just love to know more about that. So I'm, I'm, I want to have you back on. We'll just have to figure out when we can do that. But thank you. Thank you so much. You are so much fun. And I really appreciate you being here. Everybody, thank you for watching. A big round of applause for Beth. She was wonderful. Um, my name is Ben. You are sleeping with Ben. And for that, you get a cuddle. I'm giving you a cuddle. Thanks, Beth. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.